Hello, everyone, and welcome to another lecture of School of Sonana. And today we will have a bonus lecture about fast testing. So at the beginning, I will tell you something about uh, fast testing, what it is, and uh, what are the benefits and challenges. And at the end, I will show you a hands-on example how you can write a simple fast test. At the very beginning, I would like to speak about software development status quo, which is that any software needs to be properly verified. I put the properly in quotes because it really depends on the software you are developing and uh, on the application and also different people have different opinions. But in general, you would like to have some uh, unit tests, also integration tests to test the whole software. And uh, in ideal case, you want to base your tests on uh, software requirements. Also, uh, you want to aim for a high test coverage. Manual code reviews are important and uh, the, let's say, last layer are also security audits. And uh, they mar they, uh, there may be also other uh, techniques how you can improve the software development quality. However, all these uh, techniques are quite uh, time consuming and also resources and money uh, consuming. But the problem is that uh, it actually does not guarantee the absence of bugs. So that's why we have also uh, fast testing. Fast testing is also known as simply fuzzing. And uh, it is a automated software testing method that adds another uh, layer to, to your testing. Unfortunately, it also does not guarantee that uh, you will have no bugs in your software, but it increases the robustness of your program. And the principle is that the fuzzer passes, let's say, malformed, invalid or unexpected inputs to your program, and it tries to basically crash your program, or it checks uh, any violations on your invariants. An invariant, uh, this is something that you define in your fastest, and you can imagine it, for example, if you have a deposit instruction, you can say that during the deposit, your account balance must only increase. So if during a test, the balance of your account during the deposit instruction decreases, then the invariant is violated and uh, your test should crash. And uh, using these automated techniques um, helps you to find different edge cases and the fuzzer can generate basically thousands of different variations. And uh, what are the benefits of fuzzing? So, as I already pointed out, uh, you most likely, or the fastest will most likely find bugs that would be missed by other tests, because other tests are basically done only manually. So there is a high chance that you will not cover the whole uh, space of uh, variables, for example, at different uh, edge cases. Another benefit is so-called set it and forget it. So once you set the fastest, then you can reuse it very easily and many times, even if you modify your program. Uh, if your fastest are robust enough, then uh, you can just uh, run it again. Uh, so it's, th th there is uh, not a lot of maintenance. And uh, of course, it, it increases the test coverage and it is also easy to scale. So you can have uh, multiple machines that will run uh, the fast tests, for example, with different inputs also and, and so on. All these benefits are, of course, not uh, for free. So there is a certain uh, price to pay. 
And the challenges are that, um, first of all, the environment setup and all the testing setup may be quite complicated, especially if you need to add uh, another dependencies to your program or if you don't have a single repository and so on. Also, uh, creating the testing harness and the fastest itself, it might be quite complex and it uh, might develop, uh, it might um, need quite some time for, for of the development. And uh, finally, because it is an automated method, there might be really a lot of data and uh, your tests might generate a lot of crashes that you will need to um, analyze. And that's why we have developed our tool called uh, Trdelnik, that is a fast testing framework. It is uh, written entirely in Rust and uh, it supports Solana programs written in Anchor framework. And uh, the goal is basically to help you with all these uh, complex steps. So it automatically sets up, sets up the testing environment for you and all the dependencies. It also generates basic test harness and uh, some testing templates for you. And uh, last but not least, it provides CLI, so the command line interface for you to run and debug the fast tests. And uh, our tool is based on Google's Honkfast library. So Honkfast library is a widely used library for fuzzing. And there is also a crate uh, for Rust-based uh, programs. So uh, we thought that uh, it's not necessary to reinvent the wheel. And uh, we have based uh, Terdelnik on this library. Solana uh, programs and not only written in Anchor has um, some specifics if you would like to uh, fuzz it. And uh, as you already know, uh, if you invoke an instruction, you have to pass the instruction parameters and you have to pass also instruction accounts. So these are the variables that uh, you can fuzz uh, in your fastest and that you can generate, let's say, randomly. And uh, also uh, what is important is the invocation order. So uh, this is a third option that you can implement in your fastest is that uh, your fastest will invoke uh, your instructions in different order. And finally, uh, you can have the combinations of all these cases above. And before we will go to the hands-on, I have uh, here also a very basic fuzzing workflow. What you need to do? So the very first step is the analysis of the system under test. Uh, in our case, this is uh, your anchor program. And uh, you have to analyze uh, the program because uh, we are um, we want to fuzz a smart contract, and uh, in our smart contract uh, you have uh, different um, cryptographic um, functions. So uh, you have to adapt your uh, fastest so that you don't have to. Um, basically crack these crypto, uh, cryptographic uh, functions because your uh, fuzzer uh, wouldn't go very um, far. Uh, so uh, it means that, uh, for example, um, you will not uh, crack any uh, signatures uh, with your fastest. Uh, so you would like to adapt your test that the, uh, that, uh, the signatures are either uh, somehow ignored or that they are uh, signed uh, correctly. And uh, that's why the second step is the determination of inputs. So uh, uh, mostly uh, you would like uh, to fuzz only some subset of uh, the parameters that you can fuzz. Also because the space uh, is uh, too complex. So you want to point your fuzzer to some particular maybe branch of your program. And um, if you have these two steps, uh, then 
you can write your fast test and uh, run it, of course. And the last step is uh, that uh, in case of uh, crash, you have to analyze and uh, debug your, uh, your program based on the locked crashes. And once you uh, debug your, your program, you can fix it or you can maybe fix some problems in, in your fastest and you can start the, um, the workflow again. So this was the brief introduction to fast testing. And now let's look at the hands-on example. Okay, so to showcase how you can write a simple fast test, I prepared um, also a simple anchor program. So let's go through the program first. And uh, as you can see on the left side, this is the usual anchor structure, folder structure. We have here the program that is called counter. And this counter pro program has only two instructions, initialize and update. The initialize instruction, if we will go uh, to its context, um, it actually creates and initializes new uh, counter data account. And uh, in this counter data account, we will store here uh, the public key of an authority and an integer uh, with the counter. And then also in the initialize instruction, instruction we just pass the user uh, that will sign and uh, pay for the transaction and the user will be set uh, as the authority and we have to pass also the system program because we are creating a new account so here in the initialize instruction you can see that uh, we only uh, set uh, the counter to zero and uh, set the authority to the user's uh, pub key so this is the first initialize instruction and uh, then we have the update uh, instruction that actually uh, takes two input parameters, which are which are just uh, eight bit unsigned integers, and uh, we just do some simple operations here. So first, uh, we only uh, log uh, the two input parameters to the to the logs, and uh, then here we have uh, an artificial uh, error that when the input one is equal to the magic number, which is uh, in this case uh, 254, uh, then our program will panic um, and um, with the message black magic not supported. And uh, if, the, uh, if the program does not panic here, then it will just continue and it will calculate the value of the, of the counter using the buggy uh, math function. So for now, uh, there is no bug, uh, but uh, yeah, if we would uh, comment this condition, uh, then uh, there will be uh, essentially two possible bugs. So uh, one of them uh, will be uh, underflow uh, during uh, the substract operation if uh, the input two will be uh, greater than the magic number. Uh, or if the input two will be equal to the magic number, then we will have division by zero at uh, this line. So uh, later on, uh, we will, uh, or I will show you how the fuzzer uh, can discover these uh, errors if we will uh, comment this condition. So yeah, this is the program that we will test today. And uh, to start, writing or before we start writing the fastest, we have to um, prepare our environment and install the dependencies. So first of all, uh, if, we, if we will open our terminal, um, we will need to use uh, Rust's uh, nightly uh, build uh, because um, our Tredelnik tool uh, needs some uh, features that are only in the nightly uh, build. Uh, so to do that, you can just type uh, Rust uh, Rust up uh, default nightly, and uh, this is how 
the toolchain will be uh, set up for you automatically. And uh, then you need to install uh, Trdelnik CLI. So uh, this is uh, using the cargo install Trdelnik dash CLI command. Uh, you can also use force. Uh, I think uh, if you had it installed, uh, it should install the, the latest version. Um, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, the latest versions of Cargo uh, just uh, add their, the, the force and update uh, to the latest version. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can just uh, install it with the force uh, option. Uh, I will not do that because I uh, have it already installed. And uh, because we would like to run the fastest that uh, uses the Honkfuss uh, library, uh, you have to also install uh, the um, Honkfuss uh, cargo module, like so. So cargo install Honkfuss. And once you have that, you can uh, verify uh, that uh, everything works uh, by uh, typing at Rdelnik help and uh, you should see uh, this uh, help and uh, yeah also uh, we need to initialize the uh, testing framework so this is quite easy you just have to type Rdelnik in it and uh, it should do the do job for you so let's run this command So now the initialization is ready and uh, we can see that uh, Trdelnik actually added and modified some uh, files in our uh, project. So uh, first of all, uh, there is a new Trdelnik TOML configuration file. Uh, then also the cargo TOML file has been edited uh, and uh, it added the Dernic tests folder uh, to the to the workspace. So uh, here is the Dernic tests uh, folder uh, where you can uh, write your uh, tests like a regular uh, Rust based uh, tests, and there is also the source folder uh, where you can write your uh, fast tests. So I will uh, show it to you later. And uh, also what uh, Trdelnik uh, did for us is that uh, it generated uh, this uh, .program client folder. And if we will open it, uh, there is a library.rs uh, file uh, where you can find uh, the uh, basically an API uh, to call uh, your instructions. Uh, but, uh, and here you have the, for example, the initialize function uh, that actually uh, creates uh, the instruction and also sends it. And then you have here only the initialize instruction that creates the instruction uh, for you. So you don't have to compose it uh, manually because you just call this function, you pass the required parameters and the instruction uh, is uh, constructed automatically uh, for you. And uh, then you have also the update instruction um, to, to send it here uh, or just to compose the instruction itself. So uh, the, the, the client uh, is generated automatically for you that uh, you can later on use it in your tests and your fastest. And to check uh, if uh, also the fuzzing works, uh, you can already uh, call uh, the command uh, fuzz run fast target. So uh, you just run the uh, fastest that is called fast target, and at fast target, uh, this is the default. Uh, template that has been generated here in the Trdelnik test source bin uh, fuzz target.rs file. So uh, uh, let's run it if everything works. 
Uh, now it will uh, have to compile uh, everything uh, again because uh, for the uh, for fuzzing uh, there is some special instrumentation added to your uh, code that is used to uh, monitor the uh, test coverage and uh, yeah so we have to wait a little bit Great, so the compilation is done and uh, there were no compilation errors. So you can see that the fuzzer is uh, running. So uh, for now we can just uh, kill it using the control C command. And uh, yeah, we will uh, get back later to this, uh, uh, to the logs here. But yeah, so we have confirmed that uh, the fuzzing works and uh, now we can check the fastest template which is in uh, Tredernik test source bin uh, fast target .rs file and uh, this file was automatically generated for us and this is uh, the template for for the fastest uh, as you can see, uh, here is the main function uh, of uh, this binary uh, and uh, that, that will be uh, executed. Uh, there is uh, also a, uh, just infinite loop uh, that uh, executes the tests uh, over and over again until you kill the, the program on, uh, or until uh, there is some other condition met and the program is interrupted. And uh, also there is the honkfuzz uh, macro that takes as a parameter a closure. So uh, the closure or the, uh, the macro actually does not uh, support uh, asynchronous uh, uh, code uh, in it. So uh, we have to uh, use the uh, Tokyo runtime here to uh, call the asynchronous, asynchronous uh, code as uh, a blocking code. So that's why the, uh, the, there is this line. And uh, in our fastest, we are using the Solana's uh, program test crate. So uh, actually uh, here for you, uh, it's generated automatically uh, the, the creation of the, of the test and uh, it automatically um, <clears throat> adds your program that you would like to test and uh, then it starts the test environment or the, the client for you. And now uh, there is the part that uh, you will have to edit. So for now, there is just some a dummy init instruction. Uh, but uh, very often a program needs to be uh, initialized. So this is something that you can do at the beginning of your, of your fastest. So for now, it is just a dummy instruction. If we will jump to this function, you can see that uh, it just returns an instruction uh, of uh, our program, but uh, there are no uh, data or accounts passed. So this is just... Uh, that uh, the fastest can uh, compile and, and run. And uh, yeah, then uh, you can create the transaction, uh, you can sign it and uh, <clears throat> sign it here. And then you can process the, the transaction using the uh, bank's client from the context that has been uh, created by your uh, test program. Uh, so uh, until uh, this stage, we basically only initialize uh, our uh, program and then we only check that the initialized instruction uh, ran uh, correctly. And uh, what will be or what is the purpose of this fast test is uh, to uh, fuzz the um, parameters of the uh, update instruction. So uh, uh, the update instruction, if you remember, uh, takes two parameters. And uh, for that, we will need to pass uh, the, the parameters to this instruction. 
And uh, we are using here a crate uh, called Arbitrary. It is a crate that uh, actually helps you to generate a structured data from unstructured data. So uh, here we have a struct fuzz data that contains two parameters. So actually this will be the two parameters that we will submit or pass to our update instruction. And uh, this data type is uh, passed uh, to the fuzz macro within the closure. And uh, this fuzz macro um, actually constructs our uh, structure uh, automatically from the raw uh, random uh, fuzzing data and uh, it assigns the, the random uh, fields uh, in our struct. So this is the way how we generate the, the random data. And here we have another a function. If we will jump inside, uh, this is where uh, we will um, pass the data to or the, the fuzz random data to our instruction we will create it's it's here and uh, then we will create a transaction uh, in the same manner as for the initialization instruction sign it and process the transaction and basically uh, return the the result so this is the um, this is the default uh, template of the test. What we have to do now is to replace the dummy instructions uh, with uh, our instructions from our program. So um, what you can do is uh, that uh, you can uh, check the automatically generated uh, program client uh, code. So as we have seen before, we already have the generated initialize uh, instruction function and also the update uh, instruction fun uh, function. Uh, so this is what we can use. And so we will delete the dummy instruction and we will just call the uh, initialize instruction. And uh, it already uh, filled in the, the parameters that we need to pass in. So we need to pass in uh, the, the account of the counter that will be created, uh, then a user account that will sign uh, and pay for the instruction and the system program account. So um, we will now create a new uh, key pair for the ca a counter account like that so uh, key pair new and we can actually uh, call it like this and here we need to pass the public key uh, then the user uh, we can use uh, the payer from the um, from the test environment is the easiest so uh, it will be uh, context context payer and we need to pass the public key and uh, then we have to pass the system program so uh, this is just a regular system program id and we have here our instruction uh, then the initialize instruction and uh, what we need to do is uh, also add the correct um, add the correct signers here uh, so because we are creating a new um, counter account uh, we need to assign it also uh, by the um, by the private key of the counter and uh, this is actually here so here the payer signs the transaction and and the counter account. So this this, this should be it for uh, for the initialize instruction. This is how we can uh, call the initialize instruction uh, from the fastest. 
and we will do the same uh, also for the update instruction um, <clears throat> as we will need to uh, use or reuse the the counter account uh, we will just modify uh, here uh, the parameters of the fuzz instruction function so we will add here uh, the counter and it will be uh, also a key pair like that and we will pass it here okay and in the same way uh, we will create our update instruction so we will use the automatically generated one from our client Okay, and so the parameters here are the input one and input two. Uh, if you want, we can also verify it here. So here uh, in our Anchor Solana program, we have the two input parameters, input one, input two. And uh, also we need to pass the counter account and the authority, which is in this case, the, the payer from the initialize instruction. And, uh, we can just reuse here uh, the data from the fuzz data structure where the fuzzer automatically generates random data for us. So it is fuzz data dot from one. This is the first one and the same uh, for the second one, param two. And now we need the uh, counters public key so this is like that and we need also the uh, the authority which is the payer and that's it we have our first simple fastest ready so Let's delete these unused dummy functions and let's try to run our, our test. And again, this is easy as before. We can just run uh, Tredelnik fast run fast target and see what, what happens. Yeah, so now you can see that the fastest is running and it actually already found uh, one unique crash so we can kill the program and uh, yeah, yeah so you can see here some statistics you can see uh, for example how many threads uh, are used uh, how many iterations uh, per second were performed uh, how many iterations uh, overall uh, we're done. Uh, also, you can see the, the coverage and the edges uh, that were um, th uh, that were explored uh, by your fastest, uh, and so on. Different uh, useful uh, information. Uh, but right now, what we are interested uh, in is uh, the analysis of the crash that we had. So we had one unique unique crash, and uh, the fuzzer actually stores uh, so-called uh, uh, crash files uh, here in uh, Tredelnik tests uh, HFAS workspace uh, fast target folder. So for each uh, fastest, uh, there, there is a, a separate folder. And uh, here you can see uh, that uh, there is a dot fast uh, file that we can uh, use basically to restore the uh, input data that were sent to, to your program during the, um, during the crash. And uh, yeah, to, so to debug the program, uh, you can uh, use Tredelnik again. Uh, you can uh, 
uh, typed running help fast, uh, where you have the commands that you can use. And uh, the command uh, that we will use is the run debug. So this is the debug fast target with crash file. So uh, let's run uh, running fast run debug uh, fa fast target. And now we just have to um, give the name to the or the, the path to the uh, specific uh, crash file. So these are the running tests, HFAS, uh, workspace, yeah, fast target. And uh, then there is only one uh, crash, crash file. So let's execute it and see what happens. Now the compilation is done and uh, actually we had to compile again the program with, uh, de uh, with development profile because the development profile adds also debugging information and debugging symbols to the executable and this is what we need for, for the debugger. And uh, so what you can see now is uh, basically the LLDB debugger. Uh, where uh, our uh, run debug command uh, executed our uh, program uh, within the debugger and submitted uh, um, the fuzzing uh, or the fuzz data to the program. So if we will scroll up, you can see that yeah, here was the, the compilation of our program, uh, then the debugger starts and uh, here already you can see some uh, logs. So first of all, our counter program is included in the test environment. And uh, then the debug information here are already uh, the transactions that we have sent. So here, uh, this program, this is the public key of our counter program, uh, program that we invoked. And we have invoked the initialize instruction at the beginning. Uh, so this instruction uh, ran with success. It was everything OK. And then we have invoked the update instruction where uh, we actually uh, or the program could lock the, the data uh, to, to, the, to the Solana log. So we can see that the input one was 254 and input two was zero. And uh, if we will just quickly check in our uh, program, uh, we can see that in the update instruction, we have this condition that if the input one is equal to the magic number, uh, which is 254, uh, then the program will panic with this message. And uh, this is actually also uh, exactly what happened here. So you can see that it panicked at Blackmagic not supported. Uh, the input one is uh, as expected, 254. And you can even see uh, here the file where the, uh, the panic happened and uh, at which line uh, with some additional debugging information with the backtrace. So uh, this is how you can uh, track down the, the crash. And uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> we are now in the LLDB um, debugger. So uh, you can either tap, uh, type here, uh, uh, help uh, here for additional information. But for now, we will just uh, quit it. And uh, what we want to do now is to correct the, the bug. So in our case, it will be just easy. We will just uh, comment here uh, the, the panic. And uh, let's see if our fuzzer, without modifying the test, can detect also other bugs. So uh, what we will do is that we will just comment here the if statement in the buggy math function. And therefore, uh, our function will not return uh, if the input is uh, uh, greater or equal to magic number. Therefore, our fuzzer uh, should um, discover uh, here the, the panic during division by zero or subtract with overflow. We will see what, uh, what happens first. So now we have um, introduced 
the, the second bug and we corrected the first one. So let's see uh, what happens if we execute the, or if we run the fastest again. And yeah, the fuzzer is running and you can see that basically immediately it find a new unique crash. <clears throat> so let's kill the fuzzer again. And uh, yeah, what we want to do now is to analyze the, the crash again. So we just want to uh, run the debugger for the new crash file that has been uh, created. And this is this one. Let's analyze the crash. If we will scroll up, we can see that this is the, these are the inputs to the update instruction. And we have here that the program panicked that attempt to subtract with overflow. So at the line 39, so this is uh, actually what we expected and our fuzzer found the, found the bug. Okay, so now we have written a fast test for our simple program and uh, we have discovered different bugs. So uh, I hope that you have learned something and maybe you will use fast testing also in your projects in the future. Uh, we will be uh, adding new features uh, to Trdelnik. So make sure that you will follow our GitHub. And uh, yeah, thank you for today's lesson. If you will have any further questions, do not hesitate to ask on Discord. Thank you very much and goodbye.